Right before we jump into this video, if you'd like to take better pictures in only 11 days, I created a free mini video course that you can sign up for at fronosphoto.com slash 11 days. Jared Poland, fronosphoto.com, and this is a review of the Sony 600 millimeter F4. This is a $13,000 monster lens that of course isn't for everybody, but the people that need it are the ones that are gonna buy it because they know who they are. You know who you are. If you can afford this and you need this, you'll be buying it. Now, before we get into the specs and the sample images, which you can download the raw files as well as full res JPEGs at the link down below. Now, I took this lens in combination with the Sony A9 out to two different real world situations to get those sample images. One was the Philadelphia Zoo to photograph the gorillas playing outside, as well as photograph some of the eagles. Because there's two eagles that just sit there, they got there in like 1992 or 93, and they kind of sit there but they're perfect for getting tight focus of their eyes to test out the sharpness of this lens. Now after that, being that this is a perfect sports lens, I took it out to a Trenton Thunder game to sit behind the plate to photograph the pitcher, to sit in the first base side and the third base side to try and get some awesome action shots with the A9 as well as this lens. But now let's get to the specs starting with the weight. You might think this is heavy. Well, it kinda is. It weighs in at 6.7 pounds, or for those of you who know grams, it's 3,040 grams. And Sony likes to say that this is the world's lightest 600 F4. Now, technically it is, technically, at 10 grams lighter than its closest competitor, well, but that really doesn't matter too much because you're most likely shooting this on a monopod or if you're doing nature and you're on a tripod of some sort with a nice head on there, you really don't have to worry about holding it. Now, if you are gonna handhold it, it does have the optical stabilization. Yeah, it just feels like that, a bazooka. It does have the optical stabilization plus in combination with the A9, you have in-body stabilization in that bad boy. Now there's something I do want to tell you about this lens that it shares with its smaller brother, the 400 2.8, though is it bigger because it's a 2.8? I, I don't think so. From here back, from the focus ring back, it's exactly the same. You have the same buttons that are here on the side, right here. You have the same buttons that are there, so you can switch those if you would like. You've got a filter drop-in in the back right here. So if you need to put in a ND filter or whatever filters they end up selling for this, you can just pop it here in the back because you're never gonna wanna be able, you're not even gonna be able to put a filter on the front of a behemoth like this because that would be really well, super expensive. Now, for those of you who like to protect your lenses with filters on the outside, you don't do it with this. This is one of the reasons why I don't use filters in the first place on the outside of the lenses, because you don't do it on the big boys. You don't want to take down the quality of this, this quality glass by putting crappier glass in front of this. It's optimized, it's ready to go. Now, if you missed it the first time, this is a 13,000 dollar lens and there's a lot of people out there going, but couldn't you just use something cheaper? Well, well, yeah, but when we analyze the images, you're gonna see the difference between F4 and 6.3 on a 200 to 600 with basically the same type of image. You're gonna see the difference. This is a lens that is going to be amazing for sports photographers, for the Olympics coming up in 2020, for football, for baseball, for nature. If you're going on those long safaris or if you just wanna go to the zoo with it, this is a professional's lens. If you are a full-time pro, you know who you are and you need this lens, you're gonna pick it up because it makes you money. Now, if you're somebody who likes to use teleconverters like the 1.4 and the 2X teleconverter, they are saying, and by they, I mean Sony is saying that the teleconverters are gonna work really good on this because just the data is passing through from the teleconverter to this lens and there's no moving parts going between them so it should focus super fast. I didn't have any teleconverters to shoot with, I just shot it at 600 millimeters. Now the most important tests with a lens that's $13,000, of course, is the sniff test as well as the wind tunnel test. So let's sniffy sniff it. 
Mmm, I can't believe it's not butter because that's just, that butter was just so smooth. You put it on your fingers, you're like, ooh, it's so lubrication-ing-ing. It's so lubricating. Now let's blow it. I totally would run out of air before I won the wind tunnel test on this one. So it passes. So now let's get into the images, starting with the ones from the zoo, where when we first got there, they just let the gorillas out. There should be a song like, who let the gorillas out? Who, who, who? The zookeepers did. That's the answer. The zookeepers did. That's kind of funny. But let's dive into this first image. This is with the, of course, 600 F4 at 1 200th of a second at F4 ISO 100. Now, some of you out there may have noticed that my shutter speed shouldn't be at 200 when using a 600 millimeter lens. That is kind of wrong. Now, why was I set to 200? Because I wasn't thinking. Yeah, I wasn't thinking because the gorillas came out right away when we were there and I just didn't think like, oh snap, I should probably be at one one thousandth of a second at least. But this image is still super tack sharp. Just look at the face. Just look at the eyes of this baby gorilla right here and they are super tack sharp. You've got the image stabilization of the lens and the image stabilization of the camera. This lens is specifically optimized to work really well on the Sony A9 and the, and the lock-on autofocus is fantastic even when photographing these gorillas that they weren't moving terribly too fast, but it locks on and it just follows them around as they move. Now, if anybody's wondering, I actually used a preset called Skittles from Fropack One on this one. We'll have more on that a little later. This bad boy is at a distance. This is Daddy Gorilla. Uh, he is a silverback, same one two hundredth of a second, but this is, you can see as he's super far away, he's not filling the frame totally, but he's nice and sharp as we zoom in. He's just like, hey, what's up? I just, uh, I've been here for 25 years. I think he's 25 years old or something like that. Moving on, great horizontal shot. Just look at how the bokeh in the background with the mother and the baby right there. Uh, they're finding the snacks and the background is just obliterated at F4. It is gorgeous. The tones are great, the colors are great, and it's just fantastic on this. Now, the reason I threw this in here, the, the mommy gorilla and the baby just leaning, is like, hey, look at those people over there, including the kid with the dude shirt who has a leash on. Why does that kid have a leash on? I don't know. But anyway, I like that picture just because of the fact the kid's just leaning up on its mom's tuchus. Now we move over to the eagles because I always want to shoot the eagles with nature style lenses because a lot of people, and by a lot of people, I mean only the people that can afford this lens, like lawyers and doctors who don't want to have Leicas and full-time professionals who shoot nature love to photograph birds. Now I wasn't in the wild, but these guys just sit here and zoom in on the eye and you're like, holy snap, that is super sharp super beautiful. So that works well. And then for this shot of the eagle, I took a couple of steps backwards so that I could fill the frame vertically, shooting through a fence, mind you. I am shooting through the fence and you can see the bokeh of the fence in the background. The same thing was in the foreground. So I'm shooting through the fence, put the focus point right on the, the eagle's eye, locked it there. They didn't really move, took a picture, nailed it. I just absolutely love the colors, the tones, and the sharpness that I'm getting out of this combination of the A9 and the 600. But that's to be expected when you have a $17,000 combination of camera and lens. Now at the very end of this video, please stick around because there is going to be a slideshow of my favorite images because I can't just show you them all right here. I want to show you more so that will run in a slideshow. Let me jump in here real quick and say if you're looking to speed up your raw workflow or have a great starting point, we created 14 custom Lightroom presets that you can check out at fronosphoto.com slash presets. Over there you can play with the sliders to see the befores and the afters and if you like them they are 40% off for a limited time. As an example, this photo was edited using the Skittles preset from Fropack One. Moving on to the baseball game. Now, the reason I chose this picture is because I wanna put it side by side next to a similar image that I took with the 200 to 600 that we're reviewing in another video. Now, the reason I'm doing that is because one is at 6.3 out at 600, and of course, this one is an F4. Now, you can see the differences 
in bokeh. That's the difference between the F4 and what you're getting for the money versus the 6.3. They both look really good and they're both super tack sharp on the subject, but look at the top right hand corner of each of the frames. Look at the stairs. The stairs you can see are bokeh away more so on the F4 than on the 6.3. And when you look at the chairs in the background and you look at the number plates, those are the reflective round things, they're just bokehing fully out and aren't as easy to see. They're much softer with the F4 versus the 6.3. So that's just to show you the difference between an F4 and of course a 6.3, but we'll have a comparison video between those two uh, at some other point as well. Moving on down the line, just loved the action shot that I was able to get here. Full swing, you have the full guy in there. Oh, and by the way, the stands are empty because it was uh, threatening to thunderstorm really bad during the game. It actually poured all the way up to game time, and that's why there weren't that many people in the stands. Well, let's just zoom in on his face right here. Super tack sharp right on his face. This is something where in the past, if I was using say the Nikon D5, I had trouble with focus when the subject would shift or move and my dynamic area AF wasn't tracking them. With the A9, with the updated firmware, lock on AF small, I put the box right on his face and it tracks him no matter what. Whether he moves left or right or starts running out of the batter's box, it's going to lock on and to continuously focus is tremendous. By the way, shooting 20 frames a second, raw, compressed for the first time because I wanted to get the 20 frames a second raw to see that I could pick the perfect moment. Moving on, we've got the guy running out of the batter's box. Again, we zoom in on his face, it is tack sharp, it's capturing everything as the dirt is flying and he starts running to first base. And then we move on to the pitcher. This guy was throwing 97, 98, 99 miles an hour. He actually hit the first batter with the first pitch. But the reason I'm showing you this is look how obliterated the background is. At 6.3, at F8 at some other things, the background is gonna be more prevalent and because there's so many ads in the background, that would become a major distraction. But zoom in on the picture again, look at the hat, look at the tones, look at the details. I'm at 2000 ISO here at 1 1600th of a second. I'm at 1 1600th of a second because I wanted to shoot this game at anywhere between 1 1000th, 1 1 2000th. I wanted to get the faster shutter speed so that I could freeze the action and freeze the motion and not get blur of the arm of the pitcher or anything along those lines. I just love the combination of the A9 and this 600 F4, and this image shows you why. Player running from between second and third base, I could just lock on to this subject and track him as he runs, which means that I can focus more on getting my composition right, and I don't have to worry as much about moving my focusing points like I've had to do in the past, or have it back focus and miss, or wonder, is it tracking it? This is tracking and shooting at 20 frames a second, and it's tack freaking sharp right there on that subject. Here's one where you can see that the background is super distracting. I know it actually says A1 limousine, and it's super pink, and it's, and it's you know, distracting. A little less distracting than 6.3, but it is still distracting in the background. Now moving on to some baseball images that I like shooting from behind home plate. I'm shooting through a net, the netting that protects us fans from foul balls. You need, you kind of need that. And so I'm shooting through the net with the 600 millimeter and of course it obliterates it. The rule of thumb is if you get close enough to that and you zoom in, it's never going to see it because it's gonna focus in on your subject, not on the netting. But this three shot sequence is great. I picked this one because you got the glove of the pitcher, you've got the batter, the umpire, and you can see the pitcher getting ready to throw the ball. On the next shot, he lets the ball go. You can see the ball starting to come in. In the third shot, the ball is coming right down the middle. I don't know what happened after that because, well, I don't know what happened after that. I don't recall. There were a lot of pitches thrown in that game. But zooming in on the subject right here, the pitcher, it's just so beautiful right there on his face. Now moving on to this next full body vertical of the pitcher, 
filling the frame. How cool is it that you can fill the frame with the 600 millimeter where I was sitting? The reason I picked this, I wanna zoom in on his wrist. Look at that. He has the seams of the baseball tattooed to his wrist. That's just super cool to be able to zoom in, see how sharp that is. Also, look at the 400 foot sign. That's the printing in white that's obliterated. Yeah, that's obliterated and not a distraction because the F4 does that for you. Moving on, I moved over to the third base side so that I could get some of the lefties batting. And just look at this, zooming in, bat, ball in the same frame. That is one of those things, it's the it's the penultimate thing you're going for in sports, well, in baseball, is the ball and the bat connecting somewhere close. And I've never been able to do that repeatedly as well as I was able to do it with the A9 shooting 20 frames a second. Because check out the next shot. You've got the ball coming into the batter and then the shot right after it, he made contact and the ball is going out. I've never been able to do that with my D5 or anything else that I've ever owned. Uh, this was the first time that I could do that. Get the ball in there twice within two shots just because it's super fast. It is incredible. And the final shot from the third base side is the pitcher, 600 millimeters, nailed this right on the face. It's just a cool shot of a pitcher, his wind up before he goes to home plate. There was no doubt in my mind that this was going to be a fantastic lens. The combination of the 600 F4 with the A9 and the new firmware is spectacular. That when I got home and I started looking at these images, I said to myself and then posted on Instagram that if I was shooting a lot more sports like I used to, I think this would be my go-to system. The Sony A9 and the Lock-On AF in combination with a 600 F4, 400 28, even the 200 to 500, the 70 to 224, all the G Master and the better lens is for sports this is an unbelievable setup to shoot 20 frames a second raw compressed and have glass as good as this the proof is in the pudding guys download the raw files look at the full res jpegs play with them and the people that are going to buy this are already the people that know they're going to buy this of course it's not for everyone it's for the upper echelon of professional photographers who make a living at this as well as the super rich people who don't know what to do with their money who just want to look cool when they're on safari getting chased by lions so that is it that's my look at the 600 millimeter f4 from sony if you'd like to pick one up you can head on over to adorama.com fro because when you use that link it helps us to continue to make these videos now after my sign off remember i'm running a slideshow of my favorite images because i couldn't show them all right here from this lens and this body and there you have it jared poland photo.com see ya